the great Sean Hannity, still in Singapore, improving that city by his very presence. <laughs> I wasn't coming Sean home Hannity. and missing the IG report on a 22-hour flight, Tucker. Uh, great show, <laughs> and especially so great thing. Sean. Thank you. All right, welcome to Hannity. Welcome to Singapore. It is 9 a.m. here, 9, 8, 9 p.m. in Washington, D.C., and the long-awaited Inspector General's report is out. We've been waiting 18 months for this, and in fact, we have the full report that the Inspector General has put out. These findings, this is a serious night in some ways. They are so important and so consequential, there's no way I was going home and potentially being in the air when they were released. So we're at the equator in order to bring you our comprehensive coverage that nobody else in the media, will, frankly, will give you instead of getting stuck on that pl flight. Now look, here's what we did tonight. It's over 560 some odd pages. We enlisted a team of experts to review every one of them. That is Michael Horowitz's review into literally what is disgusting, misconduct, insubordination taking place at the highest levels of the FBI and Department of Justice and the Obama administration. We're gonna show you all of the crucial findings. We have Sarah Carter, Greg Jarrett. We have the great one, Mark Levin, Judge Jeanine Pirro, and Rudy Giuliani. They'll all help us break this down tonight. An episode of Hannity you cannot afford to miss. So much to get to. Let's get right to it. It's time for tonight's extremely important IG report. Opening monologue. I think it's important before we get into the contents of this report that we're all going to break down in the course of this hour. It's very important to understand something. This is sadly a swamp document. Now the swamp always protects the swamp, unfortunately. And in reality, before we even get started, let me just remind you of something I said last night. The facts in this case are not in dispute. The evidence is overwhelming and controvertible. Hillary violated the Espionage Act. That's a fact. She mishandled, she destroyed, classified, top secret, special access programming information. It's a fact. She deleted 33,000 subpoenaed emails. She acid washed her hard drive with bleach bit so they couldn't get them. Facts. And she had aides destroy her mobile devices with hammers. Also a fact. Here's another fact. Christian Saucier spent a year in prison for what? Six pictures on a cell phone at a submarine that he was proud that he worked on. He never shared it with anybody. So in terms of severity, it doesn't compare to what we know Hillary Clinton did. Now, we also know that Comey and Trump hater Peter Strzok started writing her exoneration in early May of 2016. That's a fact. They didn't interview her until July 2nd, 2016. And then July 5th, they exonerated her. And they pulled the legal definition of gross negligence. They pulled it right out of the document. They pulled out in one of their earlier uh, writings in this that, in fact, foreign intelligence services had hacked into that bathroom closet. All a fact. Every single American tonight, you should be shocked. You should be disappointed. You should be concerned about what we're learning. We're talking about abuse of power and corruption at the highest levels of the FBI and how the FBI was politicized. It's all true, and we have a lot of new evidence we'll share with you tonight. And I want to be very clear at the start. I'm not talking about rank and file FBI guys. I'm not talking about them. I predict by the time this story ends, they will end up being the heroes when they're finally subpoenaed and allowed to testify and tell their stories about what they saw their bosses were doing. And tonight we'll highlight the stark difference between two investigations. You get the white glove special treatment for Hillary Clinton and then the heavy handed tactics all in against Donald Trump. It should shock you if you believe in equal justice under the law, equal application of our laws and our Constitution. Now, with Hillary Clinton, everyone was given immunity. With Donald Trump, it's search warrants, subpoenas, breaking down doors at, you know, 6 a.m., guns ablaze. The hatred of Donald Trump from the left and the media in this country knows no bounds. There really was a scheme to protect Hillary Rodham Clinton from being indicted and smear and slander then candidate, then president-elect Donald Trump, and now president at all costs. Now, the contempt for you, the American people, the things that some of these people said about us, you, the American people, is repugnant. It's appalling. It shouldn't happen in this country. 
Now to the report. As I just said, its findings confirm pretty much everything we have been telling you here on Hannity for months and that many in the media have ignored. We have Trey Gowdy summed it up very well. He said, quote, I am alarmed, I am angered, and I'm deeply disappointed by the inspector general's findings of numerous failures by the DOJ and FBI in investigating potential Espionage Act violations by the former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Without further discussion, here is what Gowdy is talking about. First and foremost, we start with disgrace. Former FBI Director James Comey. Now, President Trump fired Comey for mishandling the Clinton server investigation, among other reasons. He deserved to be fired. Tonight, the president is vindicated. The inspector general finds in this report James Comey's actions were both extraordinary and insubordinate. His investigation into Hillary Clinton deviated from well-established department policies. Now, this includes Comey and other FBI agents allowing Clinton aide and witnesses to the investigation, Cheryl Mills, to actually sit in during Hillary Clinton's FBI interview, an interview that took place after Comey had already drafted a letter exonerating Hillary of all charges. And there's more. The report also finds that while investigating Hillary Clinton for conducting official government business with a private email account, whoa, James Comey was also using a private email account to conduct official government business. And by the way, Comey responded on Twitter, writing, quote, I respect the DOJ IG office, which is why I urge them to do this review. The conclusions are reasonable, even though I disagree with some. People of good faith can see an unprecedented situation differently. I pray no director faces it again, thanks to IG's people for hard work. Let's break this down. James Comey, the FBI director, went rogue. There's no other conclusion. He broke longstanding department policy, literally writing the exoneration of Hillary Clinton before ever interviewing her or 17 other key witnesses, closed up the investigation, and immediately the same people that hated Trump that we now know, and we'll, we'll prove it in more detail, the same people literally begin the investigation of Donald Trump. Remember, they exonerated her way back in May, interviewed her July 2nd, July 5th, oh, she's exonerated. And we know people that committed the very same misdeeds as Clinton, well, they were investigated and many put in jail. That's why Comey was fired and should be investigated further, and that's not all. Now we have even more evidence to show how FBI agents mishandled the Clinton investigation. Let's go back to the IG report. Agents involved in the Clinton Foundation investigation, get this, they were instructed to take no overt investigative steps prior to the election. And the report also confirmed that while the FBI was tiptoeing around their favored candidate, Hillary Clinton, who they fully thought would win the election, Clinton's private server was being accessed by foreign actors. Oh, that's something else that they took out. And remember the FBI Trump hating lovebirds, Struck and Page? Well, they're back, and they're back in a big way tonight. And by the way, they're heavily featured in Horowitz's report. When you see this, keep in mind, Horowitz, unbelievably, this is outrageous, did not find that bias impacted the FBI investigation. I'm sorry, Mr. Horowitz, you're wrong. Look at this newly uncovered text message. The date, August 8, 2016, Page exclaims, Trump's never going to become president, right? Right? And Strzok responds, quote, no, no, he's not. We'll stop it. We'll stop it. In case you're wondering, what Strzok is talking about, he's making it crystal clear in this tweet from a month earlier, in July of 2016. Damn, this feels momentous because this matters. The other one did too, meaning the, the investigation into Clinton, but that was to ensure we didn't bleep something up. This matters because this matters. So super glad to be on this voyage with you. And of course, Strzok is talking about the impending Russia investigation into the Trump campaign and comparing it to the Clinton investigation, which he tried so hard not to screw up because it was his effort to clear Hillary Clinton of all charges so she could remain a candidate, the favored candidate. Don't forget about the insurance policy that was referenced in previous page struck texts if, in fact, Trump won the election. Now, it's important to also remember that all of this took place around extreme levels of anti-Trump bias at the highest levels of FBI. Some of it should shock the conscience. Page calling Trump an enormous D-bag. 
And that to the list, add that to the list of insults, both Page and Strzok were lobbying against Donald Trump, calling him an idiot, a menace, a lonesome human being, and so much more. And Strzok is the guy leading all of this investigation. Then the report concluded about these texts, quote, not only indicative of a biased state of mind, but even more seriously implies a willingness to take official action to impact the presidential candidate's electoral prospects. Yeah, that's political. Lisa Page, by the way, called Trump, and as we said before, we won't go back to that. And now the IG found evidence of so much more bias among FBI officials. For example, look at this message from one unnamed agent, quote, Trump supporters, by the way, that's you, are all poor to middle class, uneducated, lazy POSs, we know what that is, that think he will magically grant them jobs for doing nothing. On October 28, 2016, shortly after Comey's letter to Congress that announced the reopening of the Clinton investigation, one unnamed FBI attorney sent an instant message to a fellow FBI employee. Look at this. I'm clinging to small pockets of happiness in the dark times of the republic's destruction. And following the election, the same FBI attorney sent an instant message that said, quote, I'm numb, with a fellow employee responding, I can't stop crying. Now, prior to the election in September of 2016, one FBI agent involved in an instant message conversation where they attacked President Trump supporters. Their words, not mine, I don't use it, retarded. And by the way, that's only the tip of the iceberg. IG has referred five FBI employees for investigation after uncovering their extreme political bias. And get this, Horowitz's overall conclusion said, no prevailing bias at the FBI and its actions in the Clinton and Trump investigations. Really, Mr. Horowitz, you don't see that as political bias? What do you call everything you just reported? It's all political. And look at this. The IG report also found that FBI employees received, oh, free tickets to sporting events from who? The Destroy Trump media, so-called journalists. They went on golf outings with media reps. They were treated to drinks and food by reporters. Now, because of everything we just showed you, that report concluded that Comey, Page, Strzok, and others severely damaged the reputation of the FBI. And here's what current FBI Director Christopher Wray said about all of these damning findings. Take a look. I take this report very seriously, and we accept its findings and recommendations. It's also important, though, to note what the Inspector General did not find. This report did not find any evidence of political bias or improper considerations actually impacting the investigation under review. The report does identify errors of judgment, violations of or even disregard for policy, and decisions that, at the very least, with the benefit of hindsight, were not the best choices. We've already started taking the necessary steps to address those issues. Director Ray, read the document. There's politics all over that document. And for you to say otherwise is not fair to the American people, nor is it fair to all the good, honest, hardworking FBI uh, individuals rank and file that protect us every day that you did rightly talk about today. A good start? All right, Director Ray. Well, that would be firing Peter Strzok. Why does he still have a job, despite everything you just saw? Peter Strzok remains on the payroll of the Federal Bureau of Investigation? Are you kidding me? And meanwhile, the Obama administration was also featured in the report. Footnote, page 89, it reads, quote, President Barack Obama, he was one of 13 individuals with whom Clinton had direct contact using her ClintonMail.com account. That information breaks with Obama's initial claims that he learned of Clinton's private email from the media reports. What were they protecting? Remember, they changed that to say, oh, a high-ranking official and the attorney general. At the time, Loretta Lynch, she was also taken a task in the report for her now infamous tarmac meeting with Bill Clinton just before they came to a decision in June of 2016. The report states, quote, Lynch's failure to recognize the appearance problem created by former President Clinton's visit and to take action to cut the visit short was an error in judgment. Yeah, OK, 45 minutes talking about grandchildren. I'll buy that. But first, here's how Chairman Gowdy and Goodlatte, by the way, responded to this entire report earlier today. Take a look. 
What a dark day it is for the FBI and the DOJ, two institutions our country desperately needs. We desperately have to be able to have confidence in them. And this level of bias and animus, uh, not only did he want to stop the Trump campaign, he wanted to stop the Trump presidency. This You're is an FBI. Peter Strzok. Peter Strzok, the, the FBI agent who was on Hillary Clinton's investigation and arguably the lead Russia investigator, not only wanted to stop his campaign, but once he won, got on the Mueller probe because he wanted to impeach him. This report shows that there was special treatment given to Hillary Clinton in the investigation of her case. There are There is not uh, standard procedures followed in investigating her, uh, and there was special treatment given. There's no doubt that this was not proper process and the report shows time and time again how Director Comey and others made mis uh, mistakes, errors in judgment or deliberate. People can draw their own conclusions, but it was improperly handled. Let me sum it up. Hillary Clinton committed felonies and she should have been charged and these people ran interference for her. We have ample evidence of bias, corruption, politics, misconduct at the highest levels of the FBI, the DOJ, and now the Obama administration. Yet, won't call this for what it is, Mr. Horowitz. You can't conclude the obvious bias impacted some at the upper echelon of the FBI and their work and their so-called investigation. Why? Because that would taint the phony Russia collusion investigation. We cannot have a two-tier justice system in the United States of America. One for the Clintons, one for Trump, and one for everybody else. Three-tiered, perhaps. And while the findings of this report are important, we must now demand more. This is a first step. There's got to be accountability. We've got to have a better system of government or the very foundation of our rule of law in the United States of America is in jeopardy. Joining us now, President Trump's attorney, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Mr. Mayor, before you took on this position, you had on this program identified crimes. I think it is extraordinarily relevant how the upper echelon of the FBI treated Hillary Clinton so she could survive without being indicted as a candidate and how they have treated Donald Trump. And I do believe this impacts whether or not the Mueller investigation at its foundation, considering it's the same people involved, now should all go away as a result. Uh, uh, Sean, you're absolutely right. I was on your show about a year and a half before the election. We identified, I think it was 18 uh, violations of the law by Hillary Clinton, none of which Comey and his fix uh, were able to prove, and, and uh, it's disgraceful. But we're way beyond Hillary Clinton. We now have an investigation that, in the words of President Donald Trump, from the very beginning, has been a fix, a frame-up, and a witch hunt. It was led by Peter Strzok, who it is disgraceful. And even, even for, uh, for the present director of the FBI, to have him there tomorrow it would be disgraceful. Every FBI agent should demand that that man be fired, and tomorrow Mueller should suspend his investigation, and he should go see Rod Rosenstein, who created him, and the Deputy Attorney General and Attorney General Sessions, who, who should now step up big time to save his department, should suspend that investigation, throw out all the people that have been involved in the phony Trump investigation, and bring in honest FBI agents from the New York office who I can trust implicitly, and they should turn their attention to Comey, Strzok, Page, all those FBI agents who took gifts. Gifts, Sean? That's called bribery, where I come from. They took tickets to you know, games. They put McD Governor McDonald in jail. The, 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 the uh, angry Democrats who were working for Mueller, they put uh, Governor McDonald in jail for taking a couple of little uh, trinkets. Compare FBI agents selling out and leaking like sieves. And then the statement of Strzok, we're going to stop Donald Trump. And he's put in charge of the Russia investigation. And the guy that should be the head of this RICO case is Jim Comey. Because he's the one who created this atmosphere in the Justice Department. He's the reason that Strzok was able to operate, Page was able to operate. Those guys are taking tickets. F FBI agents should be infuriated by that. I'm infuriated uh, by it because I, I have, love the FBI. I don't want people, These people Mr. Mayor. don't love the FBI. I do. 
Yeah, I, and I was just going to say, I want to make sure the American people understand this is not the rank and file. This was literally ripped out of the hands of rank and file, brought into the seventh floor, the upper echelon of the FBI. I guess the most important thing here is, it, especially from your perspective and the president's perspective, if you treat one candidate one way and you literally have crimes and the evidence is incontrovertible, I mean, I never saw a better case for obstruction than what Hillary did to subpoena oh, emails, yeah. deleting, acid washing and, and breaking up devices. If you're going to treat her that way and you look at the the bully tactics that have been put together by Weissman in the beginning struck and the team Mueller put together, how can any American at this point not see that that is a dual system of justice and that is a risk to our entire constitutional republic? Well, I, I think, uh, Sean, I, I feel that uh, this, this whole thing has made uh, fools of all of us. I mean, they think we're idiots. Uh, we, we, we supplied 1.4 million documents. We supplied 32 witnesses. No, no privilege arguments. And who are we supplying them to? People who have already concluded to frame Donald Trump. Agents who, who started a phony Russia investigation. That's the whole core of this. That's why the investigation should be suspended. And I, I'm talking for myself now, not the president. But I believe he would agree with this. A very serious investigation has to be done of the FBI agents at the very top by FBI agents who are honest in well, order to the prosecute they them. Had for the American people. Oh, yeah, the hatred where, they where, had where, for Trump where, and the love they had of Hillary. It's all there poor, in black and white. That's political. Why did Horowitz say there's no evidence of political bias when it's all over his document? I don't know. I don't know what Horowitz concluded. I don't know what the FBI director concluded. I'm beyond that. I think all the attention now should be focused on Let's get a fair investigation of the people who corrupted that investigation, have been well, en engaged in a corrupt question. investigation from the beginning. President Trump has said over and over again to me, I did nothing wrong. How could this be? Well, now we know how it is because these people fixed it. That's how it is. Please, American people, Mr. read Mayor. this. Read this if you're not disgusted and you don't uh, demand that the Justice Department begin this investigation and suspend the one of the president and all the people that have been tortured by it, then I don't think we have justice anymore in this country. Last, last point. Um, Rod Rosenstein, we now know in meetings, has threatened to subpoena emails, intimidate, harassing congressmen and their staffs who have been tasked constitutionally with the duty of oversight. You know about these threats. And he's the guy that signed the last FISA warrant, knowing that the bulk of information <laughs> yeah, was right. the phony Clinton paid for dossier. And he's the guy that recommended firing Comey. So he's conflicted. But intimidating and threatening to use the power of the Justice Department against congressmen and their staffs. What do you call that? To me, it sounds like obstruction. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a lot more. It's a lot clearer obstruction than firing Comey on his recommendation, which is not obstruction. It's within the president's Article Two powers. So I believe that Rod Rosenstein and Jeff Sessions have a chance to redeem themselves. And that chance comes about tomorrow. It doesn't go beyond tomorrow. Tomorrow, Mueller should be suspended and honest people should be brought in, impartial people well, to sir. investigate these people like Strzok. Strzok should be in jail by the end of next week. All right, Mr. Mayor, thank you. We'll follow this story. Obviously, and let's see if he cooperates on, up tonight. Let's, let's see if he cooperates on Comey. Uh -huh. Good point. When we come back, we have Judge Jeanine Pirro, Sarah Carter, Greg Jarrett. Later on, the great one, Mark Levin. As we continue, the IG report is out, and it's worse than we thought. This is question whether or not they can have confidence in the world's premier law enforcement agency. And that's coming from somebody who's defended him a lot throughout his career. This was a bitterly disappointing report. Peter Strzok said that the vote should be 100 million to zero. He can't think of a single solitary American that should vote for. See, I'll impeach him. That was House Oversight Committee Chairman Trey Gowdy reacting to the release of the DOJ, DOJ IG report here with now with details 
Wow, this really brings in uh, some light to Janine Pirro's new book, Liars, Leakers, and Liberals, The Case Against the Anti-Trump Conspiracy. Judge Janine Pirro, and author of the upcoming book, look at this title, The Russian Hoax, The Illicit Scheme to Clear Hillary Clinton and Frame Donald Trump. Fox News legal analyst Greg Jarrett, and also investigative reporter, Fox News contributor Sarah Carter. We've been with this from the beginning. I am blown away at how much hatred, animus, bias, and frankly, abuse of power we're seeing here. It's incredible. And the hate for the American people is, is wow. It's incredible. This is certainly an indictment of the culture of the FBI. What was happening at the FBI from the highest level to the seventh floor, all the way down to the people that were involved in this investigation, but certainly not an indictment of all FBI agents, Sean. I think one of the things that we need to look at is he was very clear, Horowitz, in this report, that although he didn't find documentation, it did cast a cloud over the entire investigation, and because of the well, extraordinary I'm not bias, this. I didn't find no. political bias because it's all over. No, the no, report. no. There's political bias all over that report, and it should remove. Kimberly Strassel says they're misinterpreting. If, if you look deeper, that's meaning right. They didn't write it all out. Oh, do this because, but they really did. Kimberly has a very good point there, because if you look at this report, now there's over 500 pages, so we can't say every single page I've read, but if you look throughout the report, there is extraordinary bias. We saw it in Peter Strzok, Lisa Page. This is fruit of the poisonous tree. There's something that Rudy Giuliani said that's very important here. The beginning of the special counsel investigation, the investigation into Trump was tainted, and in all cases, should probably end that's right now. That's the big now. legal story. Let's go to Greg Jarrett. I think that's the legal point that mayor is making considering the circumstances they exonerate hillary they give her the 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 cadillac treatment donald trump comes in and it's banging down doors and subpoenas and everything they didn't do for hillary yes and james comey is at the forefront but his reputation today is absolutely in tatters his integrity has been shredded i mean the ig found that he not only mishandled the hillary clinton case he broke rules, violated policy, exceeded authority, uh, usurped the power of the attorney general, uh, and he was engaging in rank insubordination. Now, the IG says in the media, the liberal media has been seizing on this, well, we can't prove that his political bias influenced his decision through testimony or documents. Well, of course you can't. Nobody's going to confess verbally that they cleared Hillary Clinton for uh, political reasons. Nobody's going to put their crimes in writing. But the evidence is there. It is inexorable. Yeah, Judge Jeanine, uh, I know you have strong feelings about it, but I want to stay focused on this. When they exonerate Hillary in May, let's stay on the timeline, Comey and Strzok are at the forefront of it. Strzok is the one that interviews Hillary. Strzok is telling Page everything that he hates about Donald Trump. We will stop him. Among And then, of course, we have an insurance policy, and then later we'll impeach him. And then he becomes the, the heart and soul almost immediately thereafter of the, of the Russia, quote, investigation, if you even want to call it that at this point. I do not think that any fair-minded, objective, discerning person cannot see that these are the wrong people starting this under the wrong circumstances with abusively biased and corrupt opinions, and I would argue a lot of illegality in all of this. Well, you know, Sean, the, the question is not, was there, you know, hate and bias? We already know there was hate and bias. And as someone who's been a prosecutor and who's been a judge, I can tell you that the question is not, is there hate and bias? We already know there is. Anyone with any common sense knows this. The question is, given the hate and bias, what are we going to do about it? And the inspector general's report does nothing but whitewash a series of facts that are so corrupt, so biased, and so anti-Trump that you have to step back and say, or I do, is this the America that I devoted 30 years of my life to? I believe in nope. the system. I believe in justice. I believe uh, in the FBI. But Judge tonight, Kira, I, I have know. to question you can't everything believe in it. that we read. 
Well, you can't, you can't of course believe you can't it. believe in it. And let's assume this, Sean. Let's assume that they came out and said he violated the rules, Comey, and, you know, he made mistakes and errors in judgment. How would you like it if every judge said to a defendant, you know what, it was a mistake in judgment, keep going. It doesn't happen that way for ordinary Americans. This is about a would fix. This throw it's out, about a does this, Let me ask both of you a quick legal question before I go back to Sarah. Does this now make a strong, compelling, and the definitive case that the Mueller probe, and, and I always said, look at the you know Clinton donors that he hires. They couldn't find one independent to put on his team. Any team that would put Andrew Weissman on it with his atrocious track record was always suspicious. But he also put this Trump hater Peter Strzok on it, who we know the fix was in for Hillary. Then he began with enthusiasm, as evidenced by the text message I just put up there. Does this now taint the entire Mueller investigation? And should it be suspended as of tomorrow by the attorney general and by Rod Rosenstein, who I also have big problems with tonight? Absolutely, right. because Peter Strzok, Lisa Page, and now we learn today yet another FBI lawyer was involved in all three of these. The Clinton email case, the Trump-Russia collusion case, and the special counsel probe. And it taints it all. And, uh, Sean, what answer, you Judge. have here is, is someone was anti-candidate Trump, anti-president Trump, and now is in a position where he jumps on Mueller's team to deep six Trump. Did any judge worth his or her salt would dismiss a case like this in a second. And it is time for Jeff Sessions to put on his big boy pants and do what he's supposed to do as the attorney general of the United States of America. Or else... Don't, Sarah, you know, don't hold well, that position. Last word, we still have another, we still have another report, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act report that we're expecting. Oh, uh, that another 18 it. months away? Oh, uh, yeah. I don't do, believe it's going to be another 18 months away, but. Ah, no. uh, yeah, it's no. It's not going to matter I, I don't at that know. point. All right, we got to roll. Thank you all. By the way, Judge Janine is in as I try to make the 24-hour track back to Eastern Time because it's still 9.35 a.m. here in Singapore. When we come back, the great one, Mark Levin, I hear he's a little worked up over this, just a little. He'll weigh in next. The host of Life, Liberty, Levin, the number one show right here Sunday night, 10 p.m. I call him the great one. Uh, well, great one. I look at this, the part of me, and I know how much you love the Constitution. You've dedicated your entire life to studying our Constitution, writing about our Constitution, talking about it. And I read this and I see an America that doesn't remind me of the one our founders put together, but a two-tiered justice system. And I, it breaks my heart. And we have a lot of work to do if we're going to fix this. Tell you what I see as I went through this major report here. I see several things. Number one, out of all the texts, all the documents, all the emails that have been reviewed, you know what's interesting, Sean? There's not a single pro-Trump text. There's not a single anti-Hillary text. There's not a single pro-Trump senior FBI official. There's not a single anti-Hillary FBI official. This was a cabal. And these people had as their purpose to interfere with a presidential election. They interfered with this presidential election worse than the Russians could have ever dreamed of. And I am no fan of Vladimir Putin and the Russians, let me tell you that. James Comey's FBI, there was collusion. The media in this report, appalling, giving gifts and tickets to sporting events and golf outings in exchange apparently for leaks. You have a culture of leaks at the FBI. The buck stops with Comey, this is Comey. Comey, disgraced, McCabe, criminal referrals. Have you ever heard of an FBI like this? You have obstruction. Jim Comey spent months trying to make sure that Hillary Clinton was protected. You know why? Because if they had impaneled a federal grand jury and played by the book, she would have been indicted. And the Democrat Party would have had to have another convention and find another candidate. They couldn't allow that. They had to defeat Trump. Comey, insubordinate usurping the powers of the attorney general, the deputy attorney general, the associate attorney general, insubordinate. You have collusion, obstruction, insubordination. It is absolutely unbelievable. I want to get back to the media. The media, 
which sings like a bunch of blackbirds on a telephone pole. They move in one direction, they all move in the other direction. Now we know why. The media was working, much of the media, with the FBI. What the Inspector General doesn't tell us for some reason, which media, which reporters, which FBI agents, we want to know. And they don't tell us. Now, there's some recommendations that they have in this report. It was hilarious. Chuck Schumer runs to the Senate floor to immediately defend Comey, except as it comes to Hillary Clinton, and says, it starts talking about the report. Chuck Schumer hadn't time to read this report. Neither did any other the Democrats running to the media. And they all sound the same because they all have the same talking points. Here's his recommendations, the IG. We recommend that the department and the FBI consider developing guidance that identifies the risks associated with and alternatives to permitting a witness to attend a voluntary interview of another witness. That's already Department of Justice policy. What that means is that Comey allowed the Clinton witnesses to collude. We recommend the department consider making explicit that except in situations where the law requires or permits disclosure, an investigating agency cannot publicly announce its recommended charging decision prior to consulting the Attorney General. That's already Department of Justice policy. We recommend that the Department and the FBI consider adopting a policy addressing the appropriateness of Department employees discussing the conduct of uncharged individuals in public statements. That's already Department of Justice policy. We recommend that the department consider providing guidance to agents and prosecutors concerning the taking of overt investigative steps, indictments, public announcements, or other actions that could impact an election. That's already Department of Justice policy. I'll tell you what, I watched this FBI Director Ray uh, have his press conference and learned exactly nothing. And one of the things he did that I found very troubling to me is he said, look, one of the things we're going to do to fix this, and we're already at it, we're going to have very significant training of all of our agents, new agents, senior agents, all thousands of agents, that they need to be unbiased in their investigations. And I thought to myself, they are unbiased in their investigations. The vast majority of the FBI is unbiased in investigations. Why are you trashing your own agency? The problem isn't Joe, FBI agent, or Sally, FBI agent. The problem is Jim Comey. The problem is McCabe. The problem is Stroke. The problem is Page. The problem is that whole crowd. And I found it incredibly outrageous that the new FBI director, if once he said, I'm defending the FBI, it's a great institution, and I happen to know it is. But then on the other hand, everybody needs to be trained not to be biased. This report, even though the IG says he didn't find political bias, I have to say, there's bias throughout, and he uses the word throughout. But I would ask the Inspector General, then what kind of bias are you talking about? Racial bias? Sexual bias? Religious bias? Of course it was political bias. As I started out by saying, there's not a single pro-Trump text from any of these FBI agents. There's not a single pro-Trump FBI agent. They're supposed to be objective, but they've politicized it to such an extent, and the reason the reason is, as I said, they had to protect Hillary Clinton because she would have and should have been indicted. So, Hillary, I saw your little tweet today kind of thinking, well, see, even Comey used his personal email uh, for government business. But, Hillary, you violated the Espionage Act, and Jim Comey protected you. You could very well be in an orange jumpsuit today, and I'm quite, quite serious. But you aren't, and you should thank God for that. Great one, Mark Levin. By the way, I have a message from our mutual friend, Bill. He says, wow, tell Mark, great rant. Uh, he's on fire tonight. Thank you, sir. And it's serious, Mark. It's, it's, uh, you're right, she belongs in jail. Life, Liberty, Levin, Sunday night, number one show on cable every Sunday night, 10 Eastern here on Fox. When we come back, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, Jason Chavitz on how this anti-Trump media reacting to all of this and much more. Stay with us from Singapore, well, it's 9.46 a.m. Hope you're doing well. Friends, your corrupt media, they've been rushing to spin and deflect from the IG report's devastating revelations. Watch this. The inspector general could not have been more clear about the fact that he says there was no conspiracy here. 
uh, within the FBI. I expected a sledgehammer. We just got the same kind of hammer you used to nail in a, uh, <laughs> a painting on the wall. I don't. I didn't. I didn't. I, I was surprised at how mild it was. No political bias ex, uh, influenced the decision making. Uh, at either the FBI or the Department of Justice. The decisions described in the report all helped Donald Trump win the election. All the errors were in Trump's favor. All of those people are just liars, political hacks, just spinning away. They don't tell you the truth and they don't care. So news now with Reaction, Fox News, National Security Analyst, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, Fox News contributor Jason Chavitz. Dr. Gorka, we'll start with you. Your reaction to all this? Well, disgusted at all the details of the, the low-level stuff, the, you know, buying somebody a meal to get a leak from them at the FBI. But at the end of the day, it's a 560-page cover-up. There's no real there there. It doesn't get us to the point at which we have people perp walked out of the FBI and the DOJ for slow rolling and undermining an investigation of a real crime, Hillary, and then trying to undermine a, a political candidate and his administration, Donald Trump. At the end of the day, and when you look especially at the text messages and these revelations, uh, Congressman Chaffetz, I look at it and this is what I see. I see the people at the highest levels, FBI, DOJ, doing everything possible to prevent Hillary from going to jail. They did not enforce the rule of law with her and then literally took a sledgehammer and started this witch hunt investigation against Trump and they never stopped swinging the sledgehammer, which tells me we don't have equal justice under the law under this FBI director, under that last administration, and I think this is just the beginning, not the end. No, I, look, I, I really do believe that the American people understand that there was a whitewashing of what happened in Hillary Clinton's email server. There was not a serious investigation there. They never went after, they didn't, the, the report points out that they never went and got all of the actual uh, hardware that was out there. Hillary Clinton was out there, you know, destroying all the evidence. There was never a serious investigation from the FBI. And I, I disagree with Sebastian Gorka. This is the prequel. You gotta understand that the IG also has an investigation going into uh, what's going on with the FISA abuse uh, allegations I'm in not, the Russia investigation. But, but Congressman, I don't wanna go there. Here's the problem. Hillary Clinton should have been in jail. If they treated her like Kristen Saucier, she would have been indicted. And you had all of these people we've talked about tonight protecting yeah. her preventing her yeah. from getting the treatment every other American would get. And that's highlighted in this report. We now have hundreds and hundreds of pages of documentation, the manipulation of the media. The, it was an indictment of the media as well. I think the referral to the Office of Professional Responsibility will bear fruit. That takes time to play out, given the rules that they should have Hillary to do. Should Hillary be charged based on what we know? Shouldn't oh, she be she should charged? Have been charged? She should have been charged a long time ago. Yep. Absolutely. And they protected her. And yep. now they're going after Trump. The same people that protected her. Horowitz uh, is too close to Comey. This is not what the American people expect. This is not justice.